Hey, Eve, you there? What's going on? What happened to the food that was being prepared today? Is it not ready or something? Can you please tell me what's going on? Dad, I'm pretty sure I told you that I was going to be working late tonight. So I ordered some pizza for you, okay? Has it still not been delivered yet? I've already eaten the pizza, Eve. That was just a snack, right? A meal should at least have some vegetables, a piece of meat, and a couple of side dishes. Or even just having pasta or some rice with the main meal. Don't you understand that? Hurry up with your work and get home. You need to make something decent. Would you please cut me some slack, Dad? I'm very busy at the moment. My mind and body are going to be completely exhausted by the time I get home and try and cook anything. If you already ate the pizza, then you shouldn't be too hungry for anything else, right? I'm not starving or anything, but pizza is just a snack food. It's not a decent meal. If I don't have a proper meal, I won't be able to sleep well. Well, wouldn't it be better if you just cooked the meal yourself instead of making me do it for you? I'm really busy at work, Dad. There's leftovers from last night in the fridge. Why don't you tuck into that? It needs to be eaten eventually. So, you want your old and fragile parents to do all the hard work around here? Do you think it's a good idea to make me cook my own meal? For goodness sake, Eve. I've got really bad legs. I can hardly stand for that long and you know that as well. How could you be so ignorant towards my condition? If you're going to be that way, Dad, why don't you just ask Mom to cook something for you? She's done that for years now, right? She can at least make a few things for you. She's not silly when it comes to cooking food for her husband. You're telling me I should make your mother run around after me? Don't you realize how old and fragile she is too? You've really got no idea how your parents feel in this situation. Are you kidding me, Dad? What kind of parental love are you sharing with me right now? I don't see a lot of it. You're just bossing me around like a slave. I just want my daughter to cook a decent meal for me. Is that really too much to ask? I feel completely hopeless in terms of showing you any kindness. All you do is want things done for you. You don't show me any love. I'm not going to go into this with you over messaging. I, I can't come home yet, so you'll just have to find something to eat yourself. Ugh, fine. I just won't ask you to do things anymore because you'll just disobey me anyway. You're a terrible daughter and a total failure at life. How did we bring up such a child who wouldn't look after her parents? I just wish that Megan stayed at home. She'd take care of me and do as I say. She's always been the better daughter. What the heck, Dad? I'm so sick of you talking to me like this. I, I need to get back to work now. <laughs> hey, big sister. We need to have a little chat. Have you got some time to talk? I was just wondering how you're doing. Are you well? Wait a minute. It can't be. Is that you, Megan? No, wait. I, I can't believe it. What the heck happened to you? It's been a few years since you ran away from home. I've not heard a peep out of you since then. Well, I better tell you what's going on with me. I've actually returned from where I've ran off to. I've recently just come back to town. I was just wandering around minding my own business, and then I walked past our parents' house. I stood and looked at it for a bit. Then I saw you come out the front door. <laughs> I couldn't believe how much you've aged. You'd be about 40 years old now, right? You'd be very close with that answer. I'm going to be 41 this year, actually. I thought it was crazy that you're still living with our parents at the age you are. <laughs> I couldn't believe it when you walked out of their house. <laughs> hey, aren't you embarrassed about living with them still? Didn't you ever think about moving out? Well, I did want to leave the house, but... Well... You know, plans can change just like that. I suppose that's true, yeah. When you stay at home for so long, you get too scared to enter the real world. <laughs> The outside world's a big place. I know you well, my big sister. You're quite shy and clumsy, so I thought you'd struggle to live alone. It's not really like that, Megan. I just can't move out even if I really wanted to. I'd feel so guilty if I did. I don't know if you know this, but Dad has got some bad arthritis in his legs, so his movement's very limited. I just can't leave him alone. <laughs> what are you talking about, Eve? 
I'm pretty sure I saw our dad walking around just fine yesterday. It was definitely him, and he wasn't walking with any limp or anything. Wait, what? You saw him yesterday walking around like there was nothing wrong? It didn't look like he was in any pain? I know that you're really embarrassed to be living with our parents, but there's no need to make up lies about them. <laughs> People will find out sooner or later that you're lying to make it look like you need to take care of them. <laughs> you seriously saw him walking with no problems. I'm actually in complete shock over this, but I've seen him walk and he's slow and always in pain. I really don't know what you're talking about when it comes to our father. Are you really 40 years old and single? Wouldn't it be better to think more about your life rather than our parents? What's that supposed to mean? I'm supposed to up and leave my parents like you did? What's wrong with being single? I guess you're rubbing it in because you're married. It makes sense because you're in your late 30s, right? Hey, everything's fine with me. It's because I'm so popular and can be with anyone I please. <laughs> I'm not married or have a boyfriend yet, but if I want to do those things, I'll be able to find someone with a click of my fingers. <laughs> Even people who are famous and businessmen who own multi-million dollar companies. <sighs> okay, Megan. What kind of people are you dating right now, then? A famous actor or a businessman that you're trying to rip off? You obviously don't understand how fun it is to be with these kinds of people, big sister. <laughs> oh, I tell you, it's great. I do try and associate with people who make me feel better about myself and make me feel... powerful. I'm very different than you, Eve. You're the one who still gnaws at our parents' shins. <laughs> you can't bear to leave them alone and make a life for yourself. Obviously, there's a point to you contacting me, right? What do you want from me, Megan? Did you really just go out of your way to contact me? To rub all these things in my face? Only a little bit, big sister. I'm trying to say to you that time is money. You can't waste time. Especially at your age. Look, to put it really simply, I want you to get out of that house. I want you to leave. That house is up for sale now. What the heck are you talking about, Megan? You've got no right to sell a house that's not yours. I used some money to buy an apartment, and my mom and dad are still living there. After the sale's been completed, I'll get tenants to move in. It's just so that I can earn some passive income without having to do much work. <laughs> How the heck could you have gotten that kind of money? Especially if your intention is to buy an apartment, I don't get it. I've got a little bit saved up in my bank account. And as long as I get the money from you having sold our parents' house, I'll be fine. That house is already so ancient anyways. It's better to get rid of it. Mommy and Daddy would be so happy if you got them a beautiful new apartment, right? Even though I ran away from home, I've never forgotten to make sure that my parents are doing okay and have some gratitude for them. I see what you're saying. That might be a really good idea, Megan. I'm grateful for what they've done for me, but I don't think I can give any more than an inch of gratitude to them now. After nipping at their shins for long enough, you've got no reason not to thank them. As your younger sister, I feel so embarrassed about how your life turned out. I feel for mom and dad who have to put up with you in their house. I don't even get your logic here, Megan. You were the one who was kicked out of our parents' house, but you're judging me for how my life turned out? Are you kidding me, Megan? You think you can just come back and say whatever you want to me even though you hardly know me? Have you ever seen what I've been through with living with our parents? Huh? <laughs> I don't need to see what you've been through. <laughs> Besides, you brought it on yourself by wanting to look after them. <laughs> Why do I have to see that when I can just imagine it? <laughs> well, I guess you've got a point. But it doesn't mean you're entitled to an opinion when you haven't been here. <laughs> to be honest with you, I'm grateful for what my mom and dad could do for me. But I really hate you, Eve. <laughs> Ever since I was a little girl, you were always so bossy and commanded me to do everything. That's because you were an ignorant idiot who didn't think about anyone but yourself. Despite all of that, you held a lot of pride and thought you were the best daughter in the family. It was a family it was worrying to see. Mm-mm-mm. I wouldn't say things like that about our family, Eve. Or you'll regret it. <laughs> you just couldn't handle being teased by me and you were just jealous. <laughs> just do what I say and leave that house today. I mean it. 
Do you understand? <laughs> oh, I completely understand, Megan. Thank you for letting me go. Don't act like you're this strong and independent woman when you're not. <laughs> if you keep staying at our parents' house into your 40s, you're just a parasite that our parents can't get rid of. <laughs> uh, I've already sold their house, and by tomorrow you'll be sleeping under a bridge on the main highway. Is that so, Megan? Well, I guess I'll wish you good luck with everything then, little sister. If anyone needs luck right now, it's you, dear Eve. <laughs> Why don't you try to be a real human being for a while? <laughs> you need to try harder at life, you piece of garbage. <laughs> yes, okay, I get it, Megan. Jeez. Now I can live a stress-free life. I can't believe I'll be able to do that after such a long time. You've got no idea how much this means to me. If anything, it was our mom and dad who were the ones feeling all this stress in that house. <laughs> Looking forward to letting them live in a luxury apartment. I'll look after our parents since you weren't able to properly. <laughs> I'll be able to do a way better job than you ever could, big sister. Yeah, I'm sure you could, Megan. Well, they're all yours. You can take care of them like you wanted to. Good luck with our parents, Megan. Like I said before, Eve, you're the one who's going to need all the luck in the world to not fail as a human being. Ha, ha, ha. Hey, what's going on? We need to talk right now. I heard that you're going to receive the money from the sale of our parents' house. Why are you getting that money? I, I don't get this at all. It's our parents' house and I put it up for sale, so I should be the one who gets the money, right? Oh, Megan, have you finally caught on? The reason why I get all the money is because the house is in my name, Megan. Huh? What do you mean? How could our parents' house be in your name? Did you scam them out of owning their own house? Mom and Dad never wanted to pay for a home loan as they didn't think they could handle it since they're both retired now. They couldn't help the situation. They weren't earning as much money anymore. Their pension wasn't going to cover the loan payments. So I changed the house to being in my name and they allowed it and I paid for the charges myself. I actually finally paid off the loan just over three years ago. So it was you who was paying for the mortgage, not my parents? And you managed to pay it all off. How did you manage that? Is that actually true? Of course it's true. I've got no reason to lie to people, Megan. After that, I continued to live with mom and dad so that I could take care of them. But I got so exhausted after a while because dad got so demanding and what I did never seemed to be enough. So you doing what you did helped me out a lot. The proceeds from the sale of our parents' house will also go to me. Nothing but good things will come of this. I actually really appreciate that you got in contact with me so that I could leave this house. Thank you so much, Megan. No, just hang on a minute there, Eve. That's not what was supposed to happen at all. Oh, I, I know what I can do about this. I'll just have to go to my parents so we can stop the process of selling the house. Could you please contact the real estate agent so that we can stop this from happening? There's no need to do this anymore. Uh-huh. What do you mean by that? It's already been sold, Megan. You can just go back and say we aren't selling it anymore. That's definitely not how real estate works. I was even able to find a house that three people can live in comfortably. That should be fine, right? No, it's not fine. There's a luxury apartment that I was thinking of buying. I can't get it without the money from selling our parents' house. Mom and Dad were totally into the idea of living in luxury. I, I can't give up on that dream now. Look, Megan... If you don't have enough money to get a luxury apartment, there's nothing I can do about the situation. You're just going to have to settle for an apartment that suits all of your needs. Besides, I thought you said that you've got a bit of savings built up in your account. I don't want to do that. I want a luxury apartment. I like it too much. I've told my friends of my plans of buying it, and now I've got the idea implanted into their heads. Friends? What friends are you talking about? Why would you tell them something if it wasn't certain? Oh, wait. I think you told me about these friends. It's not all these famous businessmen and other colleagues you seemingly have, is it? Are you trying to show off to them or something? Yes, you'd be correct about my friends. The friends who I get together with are the ones that I do business with as well. I'm planning to turn the entire top floor of the apartment into an office space. 
I don't know how you're going to manage that if there's going to be a huge group of people that are being hired. How many people do you intend to use this office space anyways? Have you hired them before you've guaranteed the space? The business is run by five people. A few of them are very elite. They're good at what they do. If they come to me and they see that I don't have enough money, there's no way I can face them ever again. I need to show them how successful I am. I'm not saying that I want all of the money. I just need a little bit from the sale of the house. Please give it to me, Eve. I think in your right mind, you know I can't do that. I'm not going to give you a single penny. I was the one who paid for that loan all by myself. You ran off and did nothing to help out. Now you suddenly just show up when you want something. No way. I earned that money. The house was in my name, Megan. Even if I wanted to, I couldn't give you any of it because your name wasn't on the mortgage. Oh, come on, big sister. Don't be like that. Please, just help me out this once. I've never asked much from you. I've always thought that about you, but I just won't this time. You didn't earn any of that money, whereas I did. Why would I want to give it to you? Also, when you mean you want to buy a luxury apartment, doesn't it mean you want to buy the entire complex? Where would you get the money for that? Ugh, isn't it obvious, Eve? In addition to my business profits, I'd receive rental income too, so it would pay itself off eventually, right? Plus, the people I do business with are the kinds of people who would want to live in a luxury apartment. I'll gain even more connections with whoever they offer apartments to. Oh yeah? Have you even thought about how much this all would set you back? Give me an approximation. About $400,000. That's how much I need to purchase the entire building. All I need is the money I got from selling our parents' house. Please, just let me have a bit of that money. I don't need that much more to secure the purchase of the complex. Just one of those buildings cost 400000 How do you even have that kind of money in the first place? Isn't that the price for compartmentalized ownership? What do you mean? What's compartmentalized ownership? I don't understand what you're talking about. Don't, don't confuse me any more than you have already. Fine. I'll put it into words that you might understand. It's the price of just one room in an apartment. If you want to buy an entire condominium, it'll likely be 10 or 20 million. You're not going to have enough money to purchase the entire building. Are you kidding me? How do you even know if I need that kind of money? <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. If you actually think about it for more than just a split second, you'll understand. Like, actually think about the numbers that are involved here. Do you really think you can buy an entire apartment complex for just $400,000? Do you think that some real estate agent would sell it at such a low price? If you think about it, the agent would hardly make any revenue from selling it for only that much. But my friends told me that I could buy a complex at that price. They even gave me a flyer and said that they found a cheap apartment complex for me to buy. What kind of idiot friends do you have, Megan? Try and be realistic here. In this day and age, the price of real estate has increased dramatically. Are these so-called friends of yours even proper businessmen? Do they have any idea what they're doing? But everyone's saying that it's such a good opportunity. Is what you're saying for real? It's not just you saying random things to trick me, is it? You've got a phone, haven't you? Why don't you have a look for yourself and see what the true prices are for luxury apartments? Try and look up the condominium you were thinking of buying. See what the actual price is. That'll give you the right answer. But how can I do that on my phone? How would I know if what it's saying is true or not? Can, can you help me out here? Oh my god, Megan, you should know how to do this sort of thing. Type the name of the apartment complex in the search bar, then call the number of the property you want to purchase and ask them what price you'd be looking at. It's pretty simple if you ask me. Oh, right, yeah, I can totally do that. I'm not that bad with technology, so yeah, I can, I can just search it up. Okay, I'll call the number, so give me a few minutes. Oh my god, Eve, this is a disaster. What am I supposed to do? My, my plans are completely ruined. The apartment complex I want to buy is going to set me back eight million dollars. Look here, Megan. What did I tell you? You were dreaming that a complex would cost so little. Don't you understand how real estate works? I feel so ripped off by now. How can anyone afford to buy a complex that's worth eight million dollars? Hey, hey, what, what, what should I do about this? I don't have a home to live in now that my plans have gone completely out the window. I, I feel so lost as to what I should do. The 
didn't you say that you've got some money saved up in your bank account? And with that amount that you've saved, you should be able to find a place. You're going to have to find a place no matter what since you're going to take our parents with you. But what am I supposed to do about the office? Am I supposed to turn around and tell my friends that I've got no working space for them? It's like I'm betraying them. Well, you shouldn't make promises you can't keep, Megan. They seem pretty naive anyway, so I don't think it would matter if you betray them. What a horrible thing to say, Eve. And I'm not surprised that you would say something like that because you'd be the person who would betray their friends. Well, at least I didn't end up like you. You betrayed your family and ran away from home. Even when things got tough, I didn't run off. How was that betrayal? I never betrayed you or my parents. I had every right to run away. You betrayed me by taking the money that I had stashed away in my room and ran off. If that's not betrayal, Megan, then what is it, huh? I wouldn't call that betrayal. I just needed the money. Look, there's no point bringing up things from the past. It happened and now it's over, okay? If you're going to be like that, there's no way I'm helping you. You stole what was rightfully mine. I worked hard to save all that money. I can't stand living in this place with our parents. You can take care of them from now on. That's enough of that talk, Eve. You can't just not help me. All you have to do is lend me some money and I'll be out of your hair. Well, how much have you got sitting in your savings? You should be using that first. The thing is, I don't have any savings. My friend said if I sold that house, it would be worth 400000 and it would be enough for the apartment. Oh, my God, Megan. I don't even know what to say to you right now. This is ridiculous. Your friends sound like scam artists to me. There was no way that you would have gotten away with paying such a little amount for an apartment building. Hey, what was I supposed to believe? My friends made it sound like such a good deal. If I don't get the money from selling our parents' house, I won't even be able to live a wealthy life, let alone buy another place with it. Well, you didn't do enough investigating. The house is rightfully in my name, so the money belongs to me. This is your chance to find somewhere for yourself. Oh, how can you treat me like this? You need to help your little sister. It's not fair. I wanted my luxury apartment. This is all your fault. <laughs> Eve, you're in some serious trouble, young lady. Megan told me that you stole the money from the sale of our house. That family home belongs to your mother and I. Return the money to Megan right now. Dad, why should I give her anything? I'm the one who paid off your home loan. You don't think I don't know that? I know what you've done. You're our daughter, for goodness sake. But first, you need to shut up and listen to your parents. Like a good kid should. Well, father, there's one thing I'd like to ask you first. Is it true that you've got bad legs, dad? Or is it just an act? What the heck are you talking about? You stupid little girl. Of course I've got bad legs. I've had arthritis for years. I literally have to drag them around when I walk. Well, Megan told me that you were walking normally the other day when you were in town. Were you pretending to have bad legs just to spite me? This has been so exhausting and it's getting too much for me. I can't believe you and how much you've lied to me. Oh, come on, Eve. You know that some days are better than others when it comes to my legs. When they're feeling good, I go for a long walk. I even walk myself to the doctors because I know I can stretch my legs a lot more when I'm not in so much pain. Okay, if you're going to keep lying through your teeth, then I want to see the medical documents to prove you've been diagnosed with arthritis. If your legs are really that bad, surely there would be evidence to prove that, right? Well, I can't wait to show you the evidence and prove you completely wrong. How dare you treat your old man this way? Right, okay. Okay, prove I'm wrong. This is so pathetic. Even though you left everything to me, you still have a lot of pride, don't you? Oh, shut up, Eve. Don't act like you know everything. I never wanted a daughter who's always rebellious, unattractive, and unlovable. Megan works independently and wants to start her own business. She even bought an apartment for us to live in with her. She's so different from you. She's such a good daughter to us. Oh, is that what Megan told you now? Did she? You're really going to believe her word? Of course I am. We're in the middle of packing our things and moving to that apartment she bought. I'm finally able to say goodbye to my patronizing daughter for good. I can now live in a luxury apartment and be spoiled for the rest of my days. 
I'm really happy about that. Well, I'm sorry, but she's going to be crushing your hopes and dreams. Neither you or mom are going to be living in a luxury apartment. Excuse me? Why are you saying such nonsense? Of course we are. Megan told us that we are. She's got no reason to lie. Even though she doesn't have the money from selling the house, she can afford to buy us a nice, luxurious apartment. You're just jealous because you won't be living there. Well, you can believe what you want to believe, Dad. I won't stop you from moving away. I'll do what I want to do anyway. We'll not be coming back to the house. We're leaving tomorrow. Also, a failure like you is no longer a part of this family. Good day! <laughs> hey! You! Give me back my money immediately! I can't stand this anymore! Give us our lives back! I was wondering when you were finally gonna get back in contact with me. That didn't take long. It was best to not rely on Megan. That's at least something I do know about her. Especially after she ran away from home. Megan ran away from us. She just completely abandoned us. Huh? What are you talking about? What do you mean she ran away? You know this is all your fault that this happened. If you just paid her some of the money from the house, she wouldn't have run off. That's not true. No matter which way you look at it, it was always Megan's fault. Why am I always to blame? I, I don't get it. Just do something about this situation. Your mom and I don't have a house to live in. You cut me off, remember? I'm not part of the family, so I don't need to help you. You've always loved Megan more than me, and I'm over it. She can help you this time. Oh wait, she fled. <laughs> How dare you say such stupid things like that to me? Get back here and help us! Hey, don't be like this. Help us! Please reply! Eve! <laughs> After all this drama, Megan and her friends changed their office space and moved to a region where living costs were lower. Apparently they managed to find a property that could be used as office space. They lived on the second floor and worked on the first floor. Because they were so dumb, the company reportedly went bankrupt in two weeks. The company disbanded and Megan got a job working at another company. In the end, she quit her job not long after that and she was left unemployed and in lots of debt. It seemed like she was reflecting on what she'd done, but it was very much in her character to do what she did. I heard that my mom and dad have been trying to look for me. Since they never did, they're probably living under a bridge right now. All I can say is they chose the wrong daughter to side with. As for me, I got married to the love of my life. After leaving my hometown, we bought a house in the city and we're living happily there. Imagine if I still had to live with my parents. Oh, I'm glad Megan saved me from that fate. <laughs> I'm sure you think you're so cute because you take care of all those flowers. But just because an old woman like you took care of some flowers doesn't mean you're anything at all to those men. So I'd stop it with that misunderstanding. <laughs> Jennifer, I never said I thought of myself as anything just because I'm taking care of some flowers. Do you think that taking care of flowers like I am would catch the attention of men? I've never heard anything like that before from anyone. Huh? <laughs> The way you're acting like you have no idea what's going on is disgusting. So would you please stop that? <laughs> what are you talking about? Um, I'm not trying to play dumb or anything right now. You saying something like that right now is only making me more confused is all. This company happens to have a lot of cute men in it. So you came trying to find yourself one of them. Well, let me just say, there are a lot of really good-looking men here, but there also happens to be me here as well. A far younger and more attractive woman than you, so don't forget that. Compared to me, you are like nothing, and will stay that way as long as I'm around. <laughs> Ugh, I see. Well, I'm sorry to burst your bubble, but I didn't join this company looking for a partner. I'm in this company because I happen to have been wanting a job for some time now and found this place to be a perfect fit for my skills. But now that you've explained things like that to me, I can tell what you're more interested in. 
Now you're making it seem like I'm only in this company for the men myself. It's not my fault that I'm this pretty and can get any man here that I please. You can even ask them yourself and they'll tell you just how pretty I am and how much they love having me around. <laughs> I see. Well, Jennifer, I'm not really the type to talk about finding men and things like that. I was wondering why earlier today you were asking me for my phone number, and this seems to have been your reason why. I had another reason in mind for why you were texting me now, but you seem to be on about something else entirely. I just wanted to make sure that you were aware of who the boss is around this office. <laughs> you happen to have a decent face for your age, and I'm sure you can talk well around any of the men here. You already look to be getting quite comfortable with a few men already. But if you're telling me you have no interest in them, then so be it. I was just worried you might use that to your advantage and start taking my men away from me. Um, is that what you thought? Thank you for those compliments, I guess. But don't be worried, as I really don't have any plans of doing things like that with any of the male employees in this company. I already happen to have a partner I want to live the rest of my life with. What's that? You're telling me you have plans to get married. <laughs> oh, isn't that wonderful? You found yourself a man that's willing to marry you. <laughs> oh, but I'm sure he's a nobody himself since he seems to be into older women like you. <laughs> you shouldn't say things like that. I can't quite explain everything about him to you, but I can surely say he is not a nobody. If anything, he's a very special man. How annoying. Speaking about your partner like that makes my head hurt. Stop trying to talk to me like he's a good man or actually worth something. <laughs> if anything, it's like you're trying to make him seem more attractive to me. Oh, are you trying to make me come in and fool around with him? Oh, just kidding. <laughs> I promise you that's never going to happen, because I will never touch a man you've been with. <laughs> okay, then can we just stop talking about all of this now? I don't really want to keep wasting my time explaining my partner to you if you're just going to continue speaking about us like that. I was really hoping today that when you asked for my number, it would be in order to talk about work, or perhaps even apologize to me when you do something wrong. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about when I say that. But anyway, seeing that all you want to do is still belittle over things that you shouldn't be worried about, I'm shocked. Ah, shut up. Oh, the way you talk to me is so freaking annoying. What is wrong with you? Acting like you're not phased by anything I'm saying? As you can see, I'm not very happy with that, okay? You should be getting all upset right now and either begging me to stop or yelling at me. I'm just trying to refrain from talking back to you in general is all. Honestly, you and I really don't know one another that well. So, it's a bit strange for you to be talking to me in such a straightforward and rude manner. Especially after all the ridiculous stuff you did earlier. I'm not sure what to think of all this, honestly. I see. Well then, let me finish with this. If you touch any of my men... I'm not going to hold back. Remember that for me, please. All those men in the office are for me to be around. And you will do nothing about it. Ever. You don't have to worry about me. Like I've explained, I have myself a partner already, and we're engaged. So if that's what you wanted to warn me about, then please relax and just let me be. I'll be going now. Hey, Marin, are you all right? I saw what happened between you and that Jennifer chick earlier. She didn't do anything else to you after that, right? What's going on, Camilla? I'm worried about what happened to you. Well, nothing terrible happened to me besides that incident at my garden. I'm all dry now and in some fresh clothes. Huh? Why are you being so calm about all of this right now? Did she end up doing anything else to you after what happened there? Nothing else. Nothing else. But it was just strange what happened between her and I. 
She saw me watering the plants in my garden today and thought that she could start a fight with me or something over it. She walked over to me and told me to stop trying to act all pretty. She then took the water hose from me and sprayed me with it. What? I thought even more things were going to happen after seeing her with you, but man. She actually took things that far, though. How could she do that? Actually, because she'd done that, you could have her fired, right? I would bring that up as soon as possible and watch her come crying to you, begging for mercy. Well, I'm going to have a talk about that later with my fiancé. I shouldn't be quiet about something like that after all, and I don't want to get into a fight with her like she's been trying to do. <laughs> but I'm going to need more than just the words from my mouth to get her fired properly. I see. <laughs> you have always been rather calm when it's come to confrontations like that. <laughs> well, anyway, how are you doing mentally? I'm fine, of course. Yet again, I'm not going to sink down to her level any. And she wasn't going to get me to scream at her either. Your outward appearance and the way you actually act on the inside are completely different. You look like someone that would fight hard over things, but really... You were very level-headed and calm. A little scary, actually, that you're that way. It's probably why the CEO is so into you, though. After all, the two of you are going to be getting married really soon here. It's coming up here soon, the wedding. I never thought things would get this far between us, to be honest. I have you to thank for all of this introducing me to both my job in the company and to the CEO himself. It's rare that I do things like that, actually. <laughs> so make sure you take me out for lunch or something is a proper way of saying thanks to me. <laughs> I can make that happen. Now, back to that Jennifer chick. Is she pretty popular with the company among all the men? Before spraying me with the hose earlier, she had asked for my number and all that. And after talking with her over text... She seemed to have a lot of confidence in getting any man she wants there. <gasps> she said that? Yeah. It was like she was having some sort of an ego trip in front of me talking about how pretty she is, as well as young, and that all the men like her so much and she didn't even have to do anything to get their attention. Has she always been that way with all the female employees? Bragging to them all and threatening them to stay away from her men? You probably already know the answer to that, <laughs> All the women at work hate her because of how she acts. She never gets any of her work done while there, instead using all their time to go talk to men and flirt around. <laughs> and the way her character changes when she's in front of men and when she's in front of women is amazing. Hmm. So that's the kind of person she is then. She was really telling me earlier to stay away from all the men and stop going after them saying I only joined the company to get closer to men and to find a partner there. She even made it very clear that she's the boss of the office when it comes to those things. <laughs> she is such a crazy woman. She acts all tough in front of you, but when she's around the men that she wants to attract, she'll play all helpless and innocent. Oh, so that's what she does. That's kind of what it looked like while I was at work with her. Honestly, she is so crazy, Marin. She goes out with so many of the men at work and will leave them only weeks after they start to date. And what's even more wild is she flirts and messes around with the men who are already married as well. <laughs> at least that's what I've heard. I'd really love for her to just drop dead one of these days. Wow. It's rare for you to ever say things like that about people. Don't tell me you've fallen victim to her once as well. <laughs> did I give that away? Well, here's the deal. For the longest time, there was this co-worker that I was really into. But as a way of hurting me, she went out with that guy and slept with him. It was my fault for never really knowing her true intentions at the time, but I should have never said anything to Jennifer at the time about him. But I accidentally said that I had a crush on him. What? Are you telling me that because you said you were into that co-worker of yours, it kick-started Jennifer going and sleeping with him? Yes, that's what happened. She was young at that time and very cute. Do you want to know what she said to me after all that happened? 
She told me that she wasn't really that into him anyway, and she never meant to sleep with him. She then said it was him that fell for her, and things just happened from there. And finished by saying she was sorry in a very carefree tone before walking away from me. Dang. What a freaking excuse she had for that. Just to try and make it look as though it weren't her fault, she pinned the blame on that co-worker? Honestly, the both of them are trash people. You would have never been happy with a man like that anyway had you started to date him. I think it's a good thing that things ended up the way they did, don't you? Well, that's true. After seeing that happen, I lost all the feelings I had for the guy. I was shown just how poor of a guy he really was for doing that. But anyway, as you can see, Jennifer is a real charm to have in the workplace. Yeah, she sure is entertaining. Well, if I'm ever able to catch her in the act of acting like a whore in the office, I'll make sure to show it to my fiancé and have her fired immediately. <laughs> you're really using the power that position you're in now has to offer. <laughs> scary, scary, scary! <laughs> Well, that idiot happened to hurt one of my friends as well, right? I would really like her to rot in hell for that. Dang, you sure have that right. I'm on board with you there. Well, thank you. And I love you. I know that. <laughs> well, I'll give this awesome thought and figure out a way to get that woman gone. I won't let her fool around in this company's office with all its employees anymore. Why is an ugly woman like you at a place like this? A part-time grandma like you should not be allowed at the CEO's wedding of all places. I think you're completely screwed in the head, Jennifer. All that happened is you and I made eye contact with one another. And the moment you knew it was me of all people, you came up to me and poured beer all over my head. Was that really necessary? The only one whose head is screwed here is yours. Why the hell are you here at the CEO's wedding when you're as old as you are? I hope that cold beer all over your head was enough to make you notice you're not welcomed here. See if you've come around to realizing that now. I want you out of here. <laughs> Is that really what you want from me? You've been covered in beer now and are all smelly and sticky. Oh, <laughs> get the hell out of here. <laughs> Sure, I guess I will then. Answer your dang phone, please. What are you doing right now? What is it, Jennifer? I was ordered by you to go home, so that's what I'm doing. I was drenched in beer, so I didn't want to stay around there anyway. Well... I never knew that you were the bride of all people at the wedding. I am so, 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 so sorry about that. Hurry up and come back to this wedding right now, please. What? I'm not going back there. I won't go back to a wedding where you're still present. You've spoiled my mood now as well. Oh, please don't say something like that, Marion. Right now there is a major panic going on amongst everyone. If you don't come back here, people are going to start to blame me for what's happened. But at the time, I didn't think something like this could happen. And that means? What do you mean by everyone will start to blame you soon? You can't say something like that when all of this is, in fact, all your fault, correct? But I seriously didn't know that you were the bride at this wedding. I mean, who would think you were the bride? The person who's a part-timer at the office and is watering the flowers at the wedding? How the hell does that make anyone believe that you'd be the bride? How did you even end up with the CEO? Calm down, Jennifer. Can't you tell right now that you're being a real pain in the butt saying such rude things to me? I was just watering the plants and flowers there because that's what I like to do. I find gardening to be one of the most fun and enjoyable jobs out there. And the garden around the company itself is another place that I enjoy caring for. But why would he choose you of all people? I've been wanting to marry the CEO for a long time. The type of woman that you are is the type the CEO happens to hate the most. He hates women that think it's okay to put others down in order to make themselves look better. 
the kind that don't think of the harm they cause others when doing things for their own selfish desires. The CEO has been told a lot of things about you, and in his head, he has a clear understanding of what kind of a monster you are. Excuse me? What is this? You think you can talk down to me now because you happen to land yourself the CEO out of luck? Get off that high horse, jerk! Whoa, is it really okay for you to talk to me like that right now? Like I said, the CEO is very aware of the kind of monster you are, and he understands the situation you've created already. I'm going to show him all the messages you're sending me now later on, so I'd be careful what you're saying to me. But if you want to keep acting like a witch, then please, keep it coming. What? You can't do something like that to me! Oh, please just forgive me for what I did today and let's sweep the rest of this under the rug. Had I known that you were the bride, I never would have attacked you like that. The problem here isn't the fact that you did this to someone who is the bride, but the fact that you did this to someone at all. I really don't think it's okay for a person that thinks the way you do to be left working in the company. So I'm going to mention all of this to the CEO and have him decide what to do with you. Please, just hold on for two seconds. I really did not plan for any of this to happen here. If you just come on back here to the wedding, then everything will go back to normal. I happen to still be new to the company as well, so I didn't know any better. So would you please be able to look at what's happened here with a big heart? Don't start pulling that kind of talk out with me. You of all people are not allowed to use that as an excuse anymore. You've been a part of the company for years now, so you're not new anymore. And from what a lot of people have said in the office, you're not a very good person to work with. What? People have been saying that I'm not good to work with? But I haven't been doing anything wrong to anyone there. By the way, I got a message regarding what happened yesterday. You were in the meeting room, and you kicked down the shelf in there and destroyed it, right? What? No, wait, I would never do something like that. Why would you think I'd ever do something as ridiculous as that? Well, I happen to think this is because the moment you were heading into that meeting room, the security camera caught you. I was a bit curious myself at the time if you'd really been the one to destroy that shelf or not, so I went and had a look at the recordings. And lo and behold, it was you. Huh? You went and looked into what happened? I made sure to tell everyone in the office that the shelf was broken when I went in there. And everyone agreed with me that that was the case. In other words, nobody was going to be blamed for it. And that seems to have been your plan. You seemed to act all calm and innocent in front of a lot of men in the office, and you were trying to use that to your benefit. But you going around saying that you didn't break that shelf, a lot of them trusted you without ever second-guessing you, because why would they? You have painted yourself in their minds to be this harmless little woman. I never did that. Because I wasn't the one who broke that shelf. Well, we have you on camera. It was you that entered that break room after all meetings had ended for the day. And I've already gone and checked with everyone who was at the meetings, and they all told me that when they left the meeting room, the shelf was intact. What? You went around asking those people as well? Yeah, because I wanted to make sure I was 100% correct before accusing you. All those that I asked were recorded by the camera as well, so I'm pretty sure I went and talked to everyone that used the room that day. Some of the people I asked said you probably didn't break the shelf yourself because you rarely go in there. That's right. They are right about me rarely going into that room. But in the video, you walked in there alone and with nothing in your hands. No papers, no bag, no laptop. And when you walked out of there, you looked refreshed. That's pretty suspicious to me, Jennifer. You're going to suspect me over something as small as that? How the hell is this happening right now? Listen, I have people that witnessed you what you did in person. Two people, to be exact. And? Just because those people saw me walking into that meeting room, you're going to tell me that I'm to blame for that broken shelf. You had plans to meet with one of the male employees in that meeting room, right? What? Why would you think that? This last time you went in there to meet with an employee who already happens to be married. I'm not sure what you were planning to do with him in there, but from what I'm aware of, this kind of thing happens a lot. Um, well, it was about work. 
I was wanting to go in there and tell them something that had to do with work. <laughs> but you went in there carrying nothing on you. No documents, no laptops. If you had something to tell him about work, why couldn't you have just done that at his desk? The only thing I remember seeing on you as you walked in was your smartphone. And I was planning to show him something on the phone. Your excuses are starting to really fall apart here. I know what was going on then. You have been having relations with the man you met with, even though he's married, right? <gasps> Not at all! His wife had suspected there was something going on with her husband at work, so she was waiting for him that day at the office. She went and stopped him before he was going to move into the meeting room with you, and that's why he never came. Those two are the people that knew about you being in the meeting room then. What? So that's what happened. After hearing that the CEO would be getting married, you threw a fit and asked the male employee you've been having relations with to meet you in the meeting room. From what I've been told is you wanted to take out your rage by doing private actions with him in the meeting room. But because he never showed up around the time you asked him to, you started to get even more enraged and took that anger out on the shelf. Now, that is just what I assume happened that day, but I'm sure I'm correct, right? Well, but I didn't do it on purpose. The fact that you didn't do it on purpose, yet you got so upset that you couldn't control yourself, that's even more scary. Well, now that we both understand what happened yesterday, I'll move on to what'll happen next. We were able to get all of the proof we need of you and that male employee having relations. And with that, you'll have to pay his wife a settlement. Good luck with that. What? A settlement? Why do I have to pay for something like that? Well, you went and had an affair with a married man in the office. Don't you think that's worthy of you paying a settlement now? You went and did something rather scandalous, Jennifer. Also, there will be an investigation done on you within the company, so please be ready for that. What? Am I going to be fired? I think so. Not only were you making a lot of the male employees do your work for you, but you went and destroyed a shelf in the meeting room. And the fact that you were having relations with a married man within the office is just gross. We might even have to take you to court for destroying company property if you'd like. So what'll it be? Wait, please. Please do not take me to court over that. I didn't think all these things would pile up on and turn against me. So, I'm so sorry. In this world, there are a lot of things that can't be resolved with just a simple apology. After getting this company and a lot of people have nothing to do with you involved in your antics, you've proven to us that you are not worth keeping around. So because of that, I kindly ask you to leave. And when it comes to what you can do for me personally as an apology, I would like you to rot in hell. After that, having told my fiancé, the CEO, about everything else Jennifer had done, she was removed from the wedding and would later be fired from the company. A lot of the women in the company really hated Jennifer a lot, so when they all found out that she had been fired and would no longer return, they all had bright smiles on their faces. Jennifer has been trying too hard to find herself a new job, now that she's faced with paying off a settlement and paying for the shelf she destroyed. But she has had no luck anywhere. This is what happens to those that think they are better than everyone else in the office and act like they're in charge because of that. Hopefully, she's learned her lesson now about being a real jerk and whore while at work. And if she does find another job, she won't be trying things like that anymore. As for the married employee she had been having an affair with at work, he later confessed to all the things he had done there with Jennifer. Things like going in the neutral gender bathroom together to have sex, to sending one another nudes using their work phones. It was all really disgusting to her. But not too long after Jennifer had been fired, he would quit his job as well, since most of the men he had been working with no longer wanted to talk to him after what they learned. But I think the main reason for him leaving had to do with his wife giving him an ultimatum when it came to their marriage. He could either continue working in the company, but they'd get a divorce and she'd take full custody of their kids. Or he could quit his job there and find a new job working in a field where not many women are seen working, like construction. So after seeing him quit, I guess we learned that he valued his marriage more than his job there. <laughs> when it comes to my wedding, it ended up being canceled by my fiancé due to me having gone home. Luckily though, he was able to take a spot in the wedding call schedule the following week, and we had our wedding there when it went perfectly. Now that I'm the wife of the CEO, I technically shouldn't be working for the company anymore. 
However, I want to at least get another year of work out of my time here before I get another job or perhaps just focus on my gardening full time. Hey there, Tracy. I was just wondering how it feels to be so old and only getting married now. I mean, aren't you in your 40s now? <laughs> hey, Opal. You want to know how I feel about getting married at my age? Well, I guess I feel pretty normal about it, really. I mean, it was basically just a matter of finding a compatible partner who was closer to me in age. <laughs> I'm not talking about that boring stuff. What I mean is that you should have been married decades ago. Don't you know that normal people get married in their 20s? So why in the world did you wait so long to do it? Surely you must know that people around you were judging you for choosing to live your life like this, right? I really don't think that my marital status has bothered anyone and it really wouldn't be their place to judge anyways. It really is just a decision that needs to be made between my partner and I and that's it. <laughs> yeah, sure. I should have figured that you would try and say something like that. I mean, after all, doesn't Zach manage the company that he works for? He's practically the CEO for all intents and purposes. But I just think it's so weird that you two ended up together. It really just doesn't make sense why he would choose someone as old as you. Especially when I think he and I would make a much better couple. I really don't think that it's weird or that you and Zach even have all that much in common. Besides, I'm not marrying him because of his job. I'm marrying him because of the chemistry that we have with one another. Oh yes, I'm sure there's tons of chemistry between a rich, dashing CEO and an old maid like you. And I'm sure that it's not awkward at all that you're in your 40s and still just a regular employee. Not even management or anything like that. Look, I don't really know what all you're trying to get at here, but you should know that I really like my job. Oh, yeah, for sure. I bet you have so much at the office every day. What even is it that you do there again, though? Because most people, by the time they hit your age, aren't still in the same position they were in at the time they were first hired on. You know, I used to think like you when I was younger. I really did, but things change. I think as you get older, you realize that people have different priorities or goals and that that's okay. And the thing is that I'm just not really a driven career person. As long as I can live a happy life with Zach, that's really all I want. Wow, so you actually just came out and admitted it. You really don't want a better life or to go further in a career at all? You might as well have just come out and said that you've given up. I hope you know that everyone around you is laughing behind your back at how embarrassing your life is. I mean, to think that you're in your 40s and only getting married now, it really is just too funny. I'm sorry, but you should know that you're the only one saying these kinds of things to me. I really don't appreciate the way that you're talking about my marriage. Oh no, I really didn't mean to hurt your feelings. I was just trying to give you a little friendly advice is all. Anyways, what kind of guy is Zach exactly? I would love to know about the guy who would marry you. You want to know about my fiancé? Well, he's a very kind, sweet, and honest person. Wait, really? Is he really nice and honest? Is that really all you have to say about him? Don't you know that those are just words people use when they don't actually know how someone is? Again, I really don't think that anyone but you actually believes that. That's just who he is. Yeah, I'm sure that your boyfriend is nice and so honest with you. <laughs> I don't even know why I bother with you sometimes. Do you know that? But I think I'm finally starting to get the picture of just what kind of guy would lower himself to marry a woman well past her prime like you. Opal, what is the matter with you? Why are you being so rude to me right now? I mean, you're always like this to me, but now you're being worse. And I feel like I really haven't done anything to deserve this from you. Well, I really don't know what you expected. Besides, you were the one who sent us your wedding invitation. So you really should have known that sending it to your brother meant that me, his wife, would have seen it as well. You can really only blame yourself for this. Are you really saying that I should have been prepared to be made fun of just for sending out wedding invitations? In what world am I not going to invite my brother and his family to my wedding? How are you putting this on me? Oh, well, don't worry. We are more than looking forward to being there. It's been a while since I've had a good laugh, so I think your wedding is going to be just what I need. 
Seriously, what is the matter with you? Why are you being such a jerk, Opal? What did I even do to you? Sometimes I ask myself that as well. And then I remember that I just don't care and it's just fun treating you like this. <laughs> wow, that was seriously a terrible wedding. I mean, just absolutely awful. Is that what it's like to be a loser like you? Wow, you mean even after the wedding is all over and done with that you still can't find a single kind word to say to me? What did I do to you to make you want to treat me like this? It, do you realize that your words hurt my feelings? Well, I'm sorry that you're too sensitive to hear the truth, but it really is all that I'm telling you. Wouldn't you rather I be real with you instead of tiptoeing around your feelings? Besides, if anything, I was the one that had to suffer through that awful wedding. You have no right to complain to me. And just what part of the wedding was so horrible for you? What did you have to suffer through, huh? What specifically upset you so much that you have to act this way? Well, I just mean, it was just such a poor wedding. Like, are you broke or something? Are you having financial troubles? I was thinking that anyone with any amount of means would never be caught dead hosting a lame wedding like that, but then again, all the other guests there looked super poor as well. You mean you're not content insulting me? You have to go after my friends and family too? What is the matter with you? You're right. I guess I really just do live in another world. I deal with CEOs and company presidents and boards of directors all day. I forget that even the poor people need to have their little moments of joy too. So thank you so much for reminding me of how the other half live and how my life could have been if I didn't make the right decisions. Okay, Opal, I really don't get what your deal is. Are you just trying to get me to dislike you? Because it's clear you don't like me, but I don't get why you can't leave me alone. What are you talking about? I love my sister-in-law. I'm sorry that you don't like what I'm saying, but it's just my opinion is all. You shouldn't take it so personally. You always try and hide behind being honest whenever I tell you that I think you're being disrespectful. Why even interact with me at all if all you're going to be doing is acting this way? If you keep this up, I might go and talk to my dad about this. Wow, did you seriously just threaten to tattle on me for this? You really are a child, do you know that? But whatever, do it if you want. I know that I can make your dad take my side over yours. Besides, he's a good-for-nothing jerk just like you. So I don't really care if he does get mad at me, since he's a nobody just like you are. Did you really just call my dad a nobody? Of course he is. He contributes nothing and just has that dumb smile on his face. I doubt that you saying anything to him would faze him one bit. So maybe you should just back off and learn your place? Don't you ever threaten me again unless you actually know what you're talking about. I know for a fact that no matter what you say to your dad, he isn't going to take your side at all. You really think that you know my dad that well? Have you seriously not talked to my brother about our dad at all? Why in the world would I need to hear what your dad is like from your brother? You think I want to hear boring old stories about some tottering old man? I know that he used to run some kind of company, but that, that was decades ago now. And now all he is is a husk of his former self. Wow, Opal. You really have no idea what you're talking about at all. I mean, is that really all you think my dad is? I think you should know that you're not making the point that you think you are right now. You just keep running your mouth. See if it changes anything. At the end of the day, you know that there's nothing you can do to me. That's why you had to threaten to go to your dad in the first place. You really are just so pathetic sometimes. Did you know that? Well, that's because it's obvious that you're going to refuse to listen to anything I have to tell you. So I know that I have no choice but to appeal to high authority. Oh, please, don't try and justify this to yourself. The truth is that you don't have any bravery at all, but whatever. I guess I'll see you at the reception dinner later. Hey, Opal, I know that we've talked about this before, so I'm not sure why we're having this conversation again. But I thought we agreed that you would lay off Tracy. Can you please stop bullying her? What are you talking about? You think that I'm bullying Tracy? I'm doing nothing of the sort. Are you sure that Tracy isn't just making up stories and over-exaggerating like she always does? I really don't think that's what's going on. I mean, she came to talk to me about this and that isn't something she usually does. You see, 
she wouldn't come to me with a problem like this unless she was actually going through it. But that isn't fair. She can't accuse me of bullying when all I'm doing is telling her the truth. If she can't handle listening to other people's opinions, then that's her fault. I really don't think that it's that simple. In fact, I think there are plenty of cases where it can be better or more polite to just keep opinions to yourself. I'm sorry, but that just wasn't how I was raised. Maybe that's how your dad raised you, but I was taught not to lie to people, especially not when they're nobodies who need your advice. Nobodies? Wait a second, what do you mean by this? Oh, come on, you know that you're not like your family, don't you, Paul? You're not a failure like your dad or a loser like your sister. Wait a second, what do you mean by this? Why in the world do you think my dad's a failure? Again, Paul, I'm only telling you what I think you need to know. I'm only telling you the truth. And the truth is that your dad is a nobody. He's a loser. Not only that, but he's living off of his son's salary like a little leech. Do you really not find that sad at all? You think he's living off of my income? Where do you get that idea? I really don't think you know what you're talking about. Oh, come on. I know that he has some kind of job that he works out. But we both know that he makes nothing compared to you, right? I mean, you're a literal CEO of a company. Do you really not see what I'm trying to tell you? Opal, I was just curious if you were still thinking of coming to my family reunion that was going to happen tomorrow. Well, I can certainly be there if you're going to be there. But why do you bring this up all of a sudden? What does all this have to do with anything? Got it. Well, then I think that we should go. I can explain everything to you better in person tomorrow. Okay then, that sounds perfect to me. I'll try and think of some things that I can say to make your dad realize the kind of life he's living too. But don't worry, Paul. I want you to know that no matter what happens, I'll always have your back. <coughs> hey there, Tracy. Is it really true that you're pregnant? I guess someone must have let the cat out of the bag for you, but yes, I am. I was planning on making the official announcement today. But don't you think that's really bad? I mean, you're 42 and going to be having a kid? I really just have no idea what you're thinking with that one. And just what is wrong with me having a child at my age, huh? What more could you have to say about my life? Oh, come on. Are you really going to pretend like you don't know what I'm talking about? You're an old woman trying to have a baby. It's just horrible. I mean, aren't you embarrassed at how bad this makes you look? I mean, I really just don't think that I could live like that at all. And I certainly wouldn't want my family to know about this. I really just can't stand you. Do you know that? You really have got a lot of nerve. Oh, Norbert, I almost never hear from you. What is this all about? I'm not sure what you mean by that. You know exactly what I'm talking about. I really just can't stand the way that you act around my family. Just how long did you think you were going to get away with making fun of my daughter like this, huh? I'm sorry, sir, but it's not like I'm trying to make fun of Tracy or anything like that at all. I just think that she has a right to know my honest thoughts on her decision. I mean, are you really going to tell me that you have no comments or thoughts about your daughter having a child when she's 42? I don't think that it's either of our business to judge that personal of a decision. And the fact that you feel the need to butt into everyone's business and give your unsolicited opinion is why I can't stand you. I want you out of here. You want me to leave? As in leave this house? <laughs> I'm sorry, but I really don't think that you have the right to kick people out of here, Norbert. Well, you'll find that you're very wrong about that. I own this house and I'm telling you to leave. <laughs> oh man, I don't know whether or not I should cry or laugh right now. You really are a pathetic old man, you know that? All right then, if this is how you're going to be, then I guess I won't bother holding back with you. I'm going to give you one last chance though. All you have to do is apologize and leave this house. And just why should I have to leave this house? Because some delusional old man orders me to? You do know that it's your son who is paying for all of us to live in this house, don't you? If you don't like how things are around here, then you can leave. All right then, I guess I'll just have to talk about this with my son. In the meantime, you should think about what you've done. Hey, Opal, are you there? I just wanted to let you know that you really should listen to what my dad is trying to tell you, okay? Please just apologize for what you've done and he might still be able to forgive you. Wait, what? 
You really think I'm going to listen to you try and tell me how to talk to your deadbeat freeloading dad? Don't you realize that your brother has all the power here? He pays for the house, he pays for utilities and food. Your dad should be listening to him, not the other way around. No, Opal, you're wrong about that. My dad is one of my brother's company's largest investors, and he invests money every single month. Wait, what? What do you mean by that? I mean that if he didn't have my dad's support, Paul's company would be so deep in the red that he'd have probably gone bankrupt already. I mean, you do know that he inherited this company from my father, right? And my dad inherited that company from my grandpa. Wait, what? But I had no idea. Paul never told me any of this at all. Well, that's because Paul still has his pride and it gets especially strong when it comes to the company. So I'm not surprised that he never told you the full story behind how he got to where he is. But then again, I'm surprised that you didn't know better considering the fact that you help him run the business, don't you? I mean, I'm actually really surprised that you didn't already know all of this. Like, how could that even be? But I didn't know any of that. He should have told me I desired to know. Well, then what do you know? I mean, how do you help someone manage a business and know none of this? Shut up. You don't know all the work that I put into the company. But what am I supposed to know? I had no idea that your dad still had so much sway here. Well, then you should also know that my dad is having a little chat with Paul right now. He's probably telling him that he feels like he has no choice but to stop investing into the company. I wonder how Paul is going to react when he hears why it is that my dad suddenly feels that way. Wait, no, this can't be happening. Please tell me this is some kind of joke. Norbert, are you there? I just wanted to say how terribly sorry I am over this little mix-up we had. I mean, I just had no idea that you were still a principal investor into the company. I didn't even know that you used to be president, but I realized the mistakes I made and I am sorry. Excuse me? What are you talking about? What do you mean, what am I talking about? I'm talking about the conversation we were just having over text. You kept going after my daughter, putting her down, making her feel awful. But are you really trying to say that that's the reason why I would stop my investing with Paul? Well, no. I, I mean, is that the reason why you would? I just hope you realize that before you come to apologize to me, that there's someone else you need to apologize to first. Of course, I promise that I'll go and speak to your daughter as soon as we're done here. Well, I'm afraid that it's probably too late for that to happen anyways. So let's just go back to talking about your favorite subject, money. Money? You mean you want to talk about your investments instead? No, not that. I've already decided to stop those. I talked to Paul about it, and he said that he understood. Wait, you mean you're really going to stop investing into Paul's company? That's right. And nothing is going to change my mind about it, so don't bother. But what I mean is the money that you were going to have to pay for your lawsuit. My lawsuit? What do you mean by that? I don't know of any lawsuit. Well, you're about it. After all, if you're really sorry for all that you've been putting my family through... I really am not sure at all what you're talking about. You'll just pay now or you won't have to make a big fight of this. I'm talking about the horrible abuse that you've been subjecting my poor daughter to. You can either pay us to compensate for the emotional damages now, or we can do this the hard way. You really expect me to pay you for the things I said to Tracy? That's right. And not only that, but you should know that Paul is going to divorce you as well. So don't even think of going to him for help. You're all on your own, dear. Wait, what? What do you mean that Paul is going to divorce me as well? I don't understand what's going on here at all. What is this? What do you think it is? Paul, my son, is going to divorce, that is, to end a marriage, you, my daughter-in-law, his wife. If you want to know more about it, though, you should go and talk to Paul yourself. But then, he would only ever do this if you said something to him. You're making him divorce me. Oh, I didn't do anything of the sort. But I did tell him that neither I nor his sister could stand being around you anymore. I told him that if he was going to stick with you, that we will probably have to start seeing much less of each other. But just go and talk to Paul about this. And don't bother trying to use your crocodile tears on me. They just won't work. But I don't... Uh, I don't understand what's going on here. How did it all come to this? 
Well, I'll say one thing to that. Paul realizes that you were using all of his money without his permission. What do you mean by that? I have no idea what you're referring to there. Oh, please. You talk all this big talk about helping Paul with his business, but really you just care about the money. But I would rather tank the company that my father started, that I inherited and ran for decades, than let you get your mitts on it. Wait, Norbert, please. I think there's been some kind of mistake here. I mean, I had no idea about all this history with the company or that you were even involved with it. Besides, uh, don't I have a right to use the money from the company as well? Why? Because you're a co-manager with my son? Then again, I suppose you really are, aren't you? That's right, and that means that I have as much right to the company money as Paul does. We've been through so much to get the company to where it is today. I see. Well, then I suppose that means you'll also share in all the debt that Paul has from the business then. Sorry, debt? I'm not quite sure what you mean by that. What debt are you talking about exactly? I thought you were helping my son run the family business. You mean to tell me that you really don't know about all the debt he's in despite running it together? Didn't you know that you two were supposed to share in the highs and the lows? The profits and the debts? Oh, oh well. I suppose you'll find out about all of this soon enough. In the end, Opal talked to Paul and Paul told her all about the debt that his business was in and why he was relying on his father's investments to keep the whole operation above water. Opal, who claimed to be a co-manager and was on paper, actually did very little work and used company funds for personal uses. As Paul began to close down the company, he ran a final audit and saw all of Opal's embezzlement. He sued her for the losses and she was forced to pay a huge fine. My dad kicked Opal out of the house after Paul told her that he wanted a divorce. Now Opal lives in a tiny apartment by herself, working multiple part-time jobs and barely making enough to afford her debt repayment. As for me, Paul apologized for all that Opal had put me through. I told him that it was okay and that I was just glad to be rid of her now. As for my father, he took a while to get over being upset at Paul as well and told him that if he could think of a great idea for a business that he would help him with an initial investment. It just goes to show you how important family is and how vital communication and empathy is for a successful relationship, business, or any other kind of interaction. I only hope that Opal has finally learned her lesson and comes out of this a better person. Hey there, loser! How are you liking your life as my slave, huh? I hope that you're at least grateful that I was generous enough to give a high school dropout like you something to do with your life. I really just don't even know what to say to someone like you. I mean, are you really not embarrassed at all how quickly you let your mask drop just because your brother is away on a long business trip? <laughs> embarrassed? And just why in the world would I have to be embarrassed or ashamed of myself when the only person here I have to deal with is you. Well, I just think that you have quite a few wrong ideas about who I am. I mean, I'm not a shut-in and I'm not as stupid as you think. Besides, you're the one who acts like a good person when your family is around, but the second they're gone, you turn into a horrible bully. Keep crying like the loser dog that you are. It isn't going to change a thing, you know. But I know how to deal with your types. Ever since I was in elementary school, I would always find girls who I could make into my personal servants. And I've done this with all kinds of girls of all sizes, personalities, everything. And in the end, they've all lost and obeyed me. What are you talking about? Just what makes you think that you're so much better than everyone anyways, huh? Well, for one, my family is super rich, as I'm sure you've noticed. And for two... I'm just the complete package of beauty and brains. I have the looks to make other girls feel bad, and if anyone tries to go against me, I have the brains to know how to put them in their place. In fact, I would say that my whole family has people like me. How do you think that we got to where we are? I see. So you're really telling me that everyone in your family is some kind of master-level manipulator or something like that? I'm telling you that we only associate with the cream of the crop, and we don't let little losers drag us down. Right. You know, you're the only person I've met from your family that has ever said anything like this to me at all. Are you sure that this isn't just some idea that you've gotten into your head? 
<laughs> you really have no idea what you're talking about at all, do you know that? You're honestly just an eyesore to have around, and you get under my skin all the time. Okay, you know what? If you really have this problem with me, why don't we just settle it like adults? You can meet me on the lawn, and we'll have a beatdown, and the last woman standing wins. I'm sorry, but I'm far too civilized to let myself engage in that kind of violence with someone like you. But then again, I suppose someone as uneducated as you would try and resort to that. Well, okay then. I recommend you quit with all the insults then, or else I might just have to try living up to them. (laughs) You really are a moron. Do you know that? Do you know that I have the power to do so much more damage than your fists ever could? All it would take would be a couple of phone calls to arrange a full investigation into your background, and then I'd have all your secrets and could destroy you with a word. Besides, I know that you're just with my brother because you're after my family's money. But soon I'll get rid of the stain on my family tree that is you. You're just a really, really cruel person. Do you know that? It sounds to me like someone didn't love you enough when you were little. Besides, the fact of the matter is that I'm married to your brother Liam. We're sisters-in-law, okay? Why you have to live with us, though, I really just have no idea at all. It's because my brother has horrible taste in women, obviously. He's always been way too sweet and kind for his own good. I don't know how he's going to survive at all in the business world. Great. Are you done? Did you let off some steam? Do you feel better now that you've said all that? (laughs) Oh, I'm far from done with you. You see, I don't have anything to do all day. So I think I'm just going to pass the time bossing you around and telling you what to do. Aren't I just the best? I really don't have time to deal with someone like you right now. Hey there, slave. Just what do you think you're doing right now, huh? You've locked yourself in your room all day. Don't you want to come outside and have a little bit of fun with me? Or you could listen to all the fun stories I could tell you. By which I assume you mean that you just want to brag to me about your life, right? Yeah, I think I'll pass. Oh, please. I'm not bragging just by talking about my life. But it does say a lot that you think even talking about it counts as bragging. But I guess that just goes to show you what you know about the real world. Yeah, you're right. I probably am an idiot. But the fact of the matter is that you've never had anything to say that has interested me. So I think you'd get about the same effect talking to me as you would facing a wall and having a conversation with it. (laughs) Yeah, and a wall would probably have even more brains than you anyways. Anyways, I'm here in the living room and I want you to come and massage my shoulders. Yeah, that isn't going to happen at all. Besides, I know that you like to wear your perfume on in the house and it just smells weird. You think my perfume smells weird? Wow. You really just have no sense of taste at all, do you? I'll have you know that the bottle of the brand of perfume that I'm wearing costs $6,000. Hold on a second. You mean you really paid $6,000 for some smelly water? Smelly water? Oh, shut up! You don't know anything about the high life! Of course I paid $6,000 because it's a quality product! I have it on very good word that this brand is making big waves all over Hollywood right now. Really? Well, I guess it's a good thing I really don't care all that much about trends if this is what's popular. (laughs) You really are just ignorant. Do you know that? Who do you think you are putting down my perfume just because you don't understand how fancy it is? Or maybe that's why you never learned anything. Because you just rejected any kind of new information people tried to give you. Sorry, is there a point to this conversation at all? Because I have things that I need to be doing and can't be wasting my time on this. No, actually, we're not done here. And yes, there is a reason why I decided to message you. I have something to tell you, actually. I am going to be having a friend coming over to the house soon. Got it? Okay, and what does any of that have to do with me? Well, she is actually the daughter of a CEO, and she wanted to come over to see the servant that I've been telling her about. So when she gets over here, I expect you to behave like the good servant you are. Got it. Sounds good. Thanks for the heads up. And just know that we're probably both going to spend the whole time laughing at you and making fun of you. And meanwhile, you're going to be cleaning the house. Understand? 
Make sure you wait for her to come over before you start cleaning and doing all that stuff, though. I want to be able to judge you for your work in real time. Okay, yeah, totally. That makes perfect sense. Sounds to me like you two must be really similar. Of course we are! That's why we're best friends! And when I told her that I had a new servant, she immediately assisted on coming over to see her. I guess it's just that kind of hobby that you pick up when you're so rich and successful. Yeah, I'm sure that's exactly what it is. Hillary, what are you doing? I'm just really so confused right now. Why are you just listening to everything that Jen is telling you to do? Why are you obeying her like some kind of maid or something? Well, I have to say that I'm just as surprised. Jenny told me she had a friend coming over who wanted to see the servant in action. I had no idea that it would be you, though. I guess it really is a small world, isn't it? See the servant in action? What do you even mean by that? You think that I asked for this? What it means is that since my husband has gone away on a rather long business trip, Jenny thinks that she can treat me like her maid. And she told me that she had a friend coming over who wanted to see her put her maid to work. Well, I really don't know what to say to that at all. To be honest, she just invited me here, but this wasn't my idea. Oh, really? I guess I should have expected Jenny to be capable of planning something like this all by herself. But then, do you mind if I ask just how you even know Jenny in the first place, then? I didn't really think she'd be the kind of person you'd hang out with. Actually, if you really want to know, I met Jenny because our parents are in business together and we met at a conference. Now that I think about it, it was Jenny and Liam there, actually. But I had no idea that you and Liam were married or anything like that. Yeah, I guess I didn't really do a great job of publicizing our marriage. But I just didn't really feel like telling the whole world about it. Yeah, well, well, that makes sense. Although I hadn't heard any of it from Jenny. But I guess it's been years since I first met her and now her dad isn't even alive anymore. But we keep in touch every now and then since we have each other's numbers and all that. Oh, I see. So then, what do you think of Jenny? Because if I can be honest with you, I think she's the worst. Well, she is... uh, An acquired taste isn't quite the right way to put it. Please, B, did you see the way she was talking to me? She really thinks that she's in complete control. She thinks that just because it's her brother who's making the money and letting her stay here that she can act this way. But she doesn't even have a job. She does nothing all day but treat me like an idiot all because she thinks I didn't graduate high school. I know. I mean, I have to say that I was really surprised when I saw her talking to you that way. Of course, I was surprised to see you here anyways, but certainly not as her maid. Or rather, being treated like her maid. But I take it that means that Jenny still has no idea who you really are then? Yeah, that's right. I haven't said a word to her about it at all, so I guess I can't exactly blame her for thinking that I'm some kind of shut-in. And I guess it is true that I never graduated high school in a roundabout sort of way. I know, but even so, I can't believe that that's the reason why she's treating you that way. It's just awful! Although, thinking back on it now, I think Jenny's always been just a little off. I remember at some parties that we went to, she wasn't exactly... The most respectful of the staff. And she would always try and make herself a center of attention or some kind of drama. Even Liam once had to pull her aside and tell her to calm down. I see. So she likes to be the center of attention, does she? And I'm just going to guess that you gave her your number because you were too nice to say no? Well, since our parents were working together at the time, I figured that it was the least I could do. Besides, that time, the party was at my house and I didn't want to be rude to a guest. I guess I can't really blame you for doing any of that then. But then why did she say that she was inviting you over here in the first place? Actually, she told me that she had met a new boy. Some guy who's known for going out giving talks at various businesses. I really don't even know his name. But I know that Jenny is quite eager to get married and she's always trying to keep her options open for someone rich. Well, that would explain why she was so eager to stay so close to her brother. She probably thinks she can ride his coattails and find another man that way. Yeah, I mean, that certainly would sound like a Jenny move to make, if you ask me. But she wanted to invite me over so that she could talk to me about that, I guess. 
She probably just wanted to try and bring about whoever this guy is, since you're the daughter of a CEO, after all. She told me that she wanted me to act like her servant so that she could show off for you, too. She really is a piece of work. But I still just don't understand it. If you have to put up with all of Jenny's antics, why not just leave the house? I mean, I don't really see why you should have to stay in the house if she's just going to be treating you like this. I really do think about it sometimes. I can hardly ever concentrate on my work, and I'm always thinking of leaving. And unfortunately, I know that Liam is just too soft on Jenny. I've even been thinking of leaving him. Okay, well, hold on. That might be jumping the gun just a little there, don't you think? I really just don't know anymore. I used to say that jokingly, but I don't know. Oh, Servant! Are you taking a break? I don't remember telling you that you were allowed to do that. I want you by my side at all times, ready to receive my orders the moment that I think of them. Yeah, I actually have to get back to my job, so I'm going to go back to my room now. So just talk to me if you have something important to say or it's an emergency, okay? I just said that I want you to stay by my side. Did you miss that? I want you in the living room with my friend and I so that you can hear about what we're talking about. I think a moron like you might be able to learn a thing or two from a couple of rich girls like us. Oh, I get it now. You're doing all of this for my sake, is that right? I should have figured that out. But unfortunately, I just really am not in the mood for putting up with your BS right now. You really don't seem to know anything. The friend I invited over is named B, and she's the daughter of the CEO for a huge company. You're probably never going to meet anyone as well-connected as her ever in your life again. Got it? So come and meet her so that you can finally understand the caliber of people that my family is connected to. You really just can't think about anything else but your own status, can you? But if you must know, I've already met B through work. Hold on a second. You're telling me that you know B because you two have worked together? <laughs> what kind of work did you do? I actually did some work for the company that B's family owns where B works. No, wait, just a minute. I had no idea about any of this at all. Are you serious? Are you telling me the truth about this? Of course I'm telling you the truth, but if you don't believe me, you can always ask me yourself. I really don't think she would feel comfortable talking about it in the room where you were treating me like a maid, though. What is that supposed to mean? A lady as rich as her shouldn't care at all about a nobody like you. But fine, I'll ask her if you're not going to tell me. But either way... I still want you down here to massage my shoulders soon. Got it? Oh yeah, I'll for sure get right on that. You can count on that. Hey B, what's the matter? Where are you going? Why are you leaving? What happened? Yeah, I really just can't deal with this anymore. I think I'm just gonna go back home. Thanks for everything though. But we haven't gotten to talk about the boy I was dating. And I still needed to ask you if you know about any other men who might be interested in me. Well, I'm sorry, but I just really don't think that I can be friends with someone who can treat another person like a servant the way you've been doing. Uh, wait a minute, are you talking about Hillary? No, you don't understand. She likes being treated that way. She's fine with it. I really don't think that anyone would ever be fine with it. It's obvious that she is sick of dealing with you. But... This doesn't even make any sense. How do you two even know each other to begin with? You're the daughter of a rich CEO. Why do you care about someone like Hillary? You really have no idea about who Hillary really is, do you? You keep looking for men in this industry, but you don't know the first thing about it. She's the president of one of the largest software companies in the whole country. Wait, what? What do you mean by that? I, I don't understand. She is basically the biggest deal in the world in terms of developing security software right now. And the ads for her products and things that she's worked on are all over TV, too. Wait, hold on. <laughs> is that supposed to be some kind of joke or something like that? I mean, this is the first time I'm hearing about any of this. At all. Well, it's not like Hillary is all about getting her face out there or going out to the media. She really doesn't like giving out interviews or going on TV or anything like that. In fact, she didn't even go into the office. 
She prefers to do all her work at home. But I guess it's probably why you had no idea about just who she really is. But wait just a second. That's not my fault that I didn't know who she was. But if she's that big of a deal, then fine, I'll be nice. Just please come back. No, that is just not gonna happen. I'm leaving and I'm never coming back. Is it really true? Are you really some kind of big software computer hotshot like B said? I guess you could say that. I don't know anyone else in their 20s making as much as I do. In fact, I'm curious. Are you aware of the massive cyber attack that your family's company suffered a few months ago? Um, actually, now that you say that, I think my brother told me a little about something happening like that. Well, I was the one who solved that problem for the company. That's probably why B didn't want to sit around and watch you try and boss me around any longer. But I really had no idea who you were at all. It's not my fault. I thought you liked being treated like my servant. Yeah, I'm sure that you think everyone likes obeying whatever you have to say to them, but I am sorry that B left before she could try and set you up with someone. After all, she told me about how you go out to your fancy parties and you're always trying to flirt with every single guy there. But I hear that you have quite a reputation among those circles now, as someone to avoid at all costs. Wait, no. That can't be right. Do people really think that of me? I think that even your brother is getting sick of you, to be honest. But anyways, now that you know the truth, would you mind moving out? What do you mean, move out? You're not serious about that, are you? Well, I do pay the rent for this place, so it would be my decision to make. And you don't pay any rent, let alone contribute anything to our place. You don't even have a job. You literally give nothing to us at all. I'm not unemployed. I'm just... I'm ready to become someone's housewife at any moment. Well, you're not going to be my housewife, and if you're trying to practice for taking care of a house, you're doing a terrible job. All you do all day is sit around on the sofa and harass me to try and clear up your boredom. You love to call me some kind of shut-in weirdo, but you're the one who's jobless and never leaves the house. You have really got some nerve talking to me like this, you know? Well, you should know that rumors have gotten out into the industry about the way that you're treating your brother's wife and how little he's doing about it. Personally, I think it's been a terrible look for Liam, and I know that you've been costing him business. Okay, okay, fine. I didn't know who you were then, but I know who you are now. Can't we just put this all behind us or something? I mean, there's no need to hold a grudge, right? I can just say that I'm sorry and we can call it all even. Don't you think? Yeah, I'm really sorry, but that just isn't going to fly with me one bit. I don't care how many times you say that you're sorry, it's not going to change my mind. But I am glad that this is all out in the air now so that I don't have to put up with your horrible attitude for another day. You really think that you can just kick me out of the house like this? You won't get away with this. There will be consequences. I think it's the opposite, actually. I agreed to let you live with us, and I've been suffering the consequences of that ever since. You don't know who you're dealing with. I have connections to... powerful people. People who you could only ever dream of meeting. If you think that's the case, I think that you're in for a real disappointment. Oh, you'll see. I'll make you pay for this. You'll see... Jenny left the house after that, but the next day she reached out to me to try and brag about her revenge plan. She had asked one of the security people from her family's company to come to my house and beat me up. But apparently this security guy knew more about who was in this industry than Jenny did. Because when I answered the door and he saw me, he immediately told me that Jenny had hired him to do this. I got all the information from him that I could and then called the police to have Jenny arrested. By the time Liam got back from his trip, I told him I had had enough and asked for a divorce. I know that he was sad to lose me and he apologized for his sister's behavior. I really hope this would have been the last straw for him, but with both of their parents dead, I understand why he wouldn't want to lose the last living family member he has. I told Liam that I respected his decision and that I wished him the best. Jenny spent the night in jail and eventually had her day in court. In the end, she was forced to pay about $50,000, which her brother covered for her. I did hear later from B that Liam and Jenny got into a big fight after that. 
They had both moved out from my condo and moved into a place of their own. Apparently, Liam was insisting that if B didn't go out and find a job, then he would kick her out. B had already ruined her reputation in the industry, however, and could use none of her connections to land a job. And with no work experience to leverage, she ended up having to take a part-time job to satisfy Liam. I can only hope that having to work a low-paying service job will teach someone like Ginny some humility and make her be a better person in the future. B and I still keep in touch, and she apologized to me for not sticking up more firmly for me when she came over. I told her that I know the effect Ginny can have on people, and was just glad that she was the one that told Ginny the truth about me. Otherwise, I probably never could have convinced her to believe me. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to see more content like this.